Let's talk about Jesus and do our makeup. And we're gonna have a little Sephora haul, okay? We got a little mini haul happening. Hello. I've been waiting to run out of concealer because, because Riley told me about this Hourglass concealer that apparently it's really, really good. Oh, I got my nails done. Look, the talent. Oh, got me talking with my hands. Got me, what'd you say? Huh? What? Really? Wow. Two items. Fresh out the box. Ooh, so, so we, oh, oh, excellent. Step one, fresh face. And we're going in with concealer. Let's get to what's really important up in here. As y'all already know, we are in the Bible recap with Tara Lee Cobble. Tara Lee Cobble is basically my tour guide to the Bible right now. Takes you to the whole Bible in a year. And there was something in Exodus that stuck out to me more than um, it had in the past, to be honest. Exodus 3, okay. Exodus the third, the famous burning bush. So Moses is grown now, he's married. He's also committed a felony. We are not talking about that right now. What we're talking about right now is this burning bush situation. Okay, it's contour time. So God is just telling Moses, I see the misery of my people in Egypt, that they are not having a good time. And it is time for a rescue mission. God says, Moses, here's the plan. I'm gonna rescue them. Another part of the plan, I'm doing it through you. If I was Moses, I... But now here's the thing, we know how things turn out, right? How Moses is splitting the sea. Let's put ourselves in Moses' shoes in this moment. He has no idea what is coming. There is a lot of unknown. All Moses knows right now, there is a bush on fire that God is talking to me through. And he's telling me I'm supposed to lead this whole nation of people out of slavery, out of Egypt, through me. You want, you, Moses and God have like this back and forth that is actually, it's so real. I love that it's included in the Bible. I am looking crazy right now, this is so funny. I love that it's in the Bible because when Moses' human comes out, anxieties and insecurities, after God is like, hey, I'm gonna rescue you. I'm gonna rescue everybody. Moses is like, who am I? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring these Israelites out of Egypt? God says, I will certainly be with you. I love that God chose a person who is more than aware of his weaknesses. So he is not eloquent. He's not somebody that's super confident. Because how many times has God asked you to do something and you feel unqualified? You'd be wondering if God has actually considered who he's calling. But this is the part that stuck out the most is that, that God answers, who am I? With who he is. Who am I that I should do X, Y, Z, that I should do all these things? And God says, I will certainly be with you. The Lord really fills in the gaps that our weaknesses create. Like it's already been accounted for. It's a lovely picture of Christ's character to call someone who doesn't feel equipped and show them actually how equipped they really are. So cool. So cool. I said before I'm saying it again, God is cool. Now throwing things, Lord. I am actually dropping so many things. Knowing that your identity and the fullness of who you are is in the Lord, that is the seed for a beautiful, humble confidence of I can because he can. We are because he is. The foundation on top, this is not a drill, this is not a game. You know, I can't find my beauty blender, but I kind of, enjoy using a brush anyways as i was saying so one of the questions most asked is like okay so what if they ask me like who actually sent me and god says i am who i am drops the mic and god says i am who i am that, oops it hit my spirit that god says i am and the enemy is always trying to make you say am i am i strong enough am i disciplined enough am i creative enough you know the enemy wants you to say am i and god is like I am, I am. Like those gaps you're talking about, those weaknesses that you're so painfully aware of, we are because he is. That is what fills the gap. When you allow God to fill your gaps and not be crippled by them, that's what brings him glory. That's what shines his light into the earth. And that's really what we're here to do. We're not here to glorify ourselves. That is when your weaknesses would actually be a problem, is if you're only trying to glorify yourself. When you're trying to glorify God, 
Weakness is an opportunity. It is a opening and is a space for the Lord to fill up. And knowing that just takes a whole lot of pressure off. It's brown time, baby. Do, do, do. Yes, it's time for a little glow. It's time for a little shing shing. It's time to be a crispy cream, a glazed queen. We are almost done. I'm leaving for LA in less than 48 hours. Is she, is she packed? No, mm -mm. I'm using sand as the concealer and chestnut. Chestnuts roasting. Light it up and fly. These two together, dream team. These two, you put a little Pat McGrath foundation on top. Girl, oh my gosh, how did I forget? <gasps> Some Tatcha. See, you know, it'd be, it be the descriptions that get me, okay? The descriptions get in hydrating mist, a glowing, luminous skin, any time, anywhere. Yes, I said add to cart. We're gonna try her out. So we're gonna see if she do what it do. Oh, and then how could I forget my last step? Hello? Hello, Uh, number five bronzer. She delivers every single time. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. But it adds just enough dimension to the face and I am living for it. But I'm thirsty. I'm a little parched. Okay, I'm gonna get some water. I'm gonna go on a little coffee run. Run some errands. I love you, Jesus loves you, and we out. Okay. <laughs>